Having played Dead by Daylight for just under a year now, I've enjoyed the game in spite of its numerous flaws. I've been able to observe many of the killers in the game, and I've made a small observation when it comes to new killers. Namely, many of them recycle the same concepts in different combinations or with a new coat of paint. Kruger, Sadako, and the Dredge all teleport, Trickster and Huntress throw projectiles from afar, and Myers and Ghostface stalk survivors to inflict exposure. That led me to think, if I made a chapter in Dead by Daylight, what would I do? Well, I came up with some ideas, and while they may not be fully fleshed out, I think this would be an interesting concept to work with. Let's begin. The Sound of Silence Amelie Boucher loved to sing her heart out. From an early age, she loved to hear the admiration of those around her. One thing led to another, and she soon found herself to be the star songstress at the Belle Rose Opera House. Though a small and dingy theater it was, it was home to her, for a time. For years, she performed and perfected her technique. As her fame grew, more and more people came to see her. The laudings of strangers did nothing but feed into her ego, but it was not enough. She needed a bigger stage, one larger than the Bell Rose. Soon, she learned that a renowned critic would come to the theater to judge her abilities. Perhaps this was the break she needed. A simple glowing review from a famed critic would give her the opportunity she needed to break free from the chains of her current dingy stage. On that night, she felt brimming with confidence. Her hair was immaculate, her garb gorgeous. She stepped onto the stage and looked out to the audience. She opened her mouth, and... The song did not come. Instead, a loud thud came from the back of the theater. All looked to see a man lying dead, having fallen from the catwalk. Everyone rushed to see, and all ignored Amelie. In time, the performance was cancelled, and as she later learned, that critic would not be coming back. This was her chance, and it was taken from her. An unfathomable rage grew within Amelie, so she hatched a plan, one that would unfold at her next performance. This would be her final song, an ode to her burning passion as the bell rose burnt down with everyone in it, and in its wake, nothing but the cold darkness would remain. Not even Amelie's ashes could be found. The Songstress So, the way the Songstress would be conceptualized would be similar to the Dredge in all honesty, but instead of playing with survivors' sight, she plays with their hearing. The Songstress's primary power would involve her warming up her voice, similar to the plague charging her viral purge, then releasing a deafening tone. Survivors can hear her humming as she charges up. All survivors within a certain range of the tone would be deafened, meaning that all sound cuts out. They can't hear the stage ambience, they can't hear footsteps, they can't hear generators, they can't even hear if they perform a fast fault. The deafened effect would last for a short while, but the way I see it being implemented is that once the bar is fully charged, the songstress begins singing, the bar depletes slowly, and then the player can hold the button down to maintain the tone for a short while or release the button to manually stop it. The longer she holds the tone, the longer the deafened status remains on the afflicted survivors. The trade-off, as you might guess, is that she moves slower while charging and holding the tone, as with many other killers and their power. I would also consider implementing a core mechanic similar to the Doctor, in which survivors scream and reveal their location when hit by the tone, but that could also make a good add-on. The only thing I would consider keeping is the Terror Radius. Behavior is planning to implement some sort of base game mechanic to help hearing impaired players in place of the traditional heartbeat, and we don't quite know what it is yet. Most people assume it'll be a visual heartbeat like in DVD Mobile, but I don't recall any formal announcement yet. It would make sense that the audio cue would be silenced, but it wouldn't make sense for a visual cue to be stopped, so might as well keep both. Besides, you can feel your heartbeat, so it's not unrealistic to keep that sense either. Now, I think this could be a very interesting concept to work with. Most importantly, like the Dredge, I think this could very easily amp up the game's scare factor. I know I've been spooked by other survivors walking up next to me on a generator and when I can hear them, so this could easily make that jump scare happen a little bit more often. I feel like there may be some additional element she needs to stand out, especially against veteran players, but I'm not sure if she would need a secondary ability or if this would be sufficiently powerful. If I were to give her a secondary ability, I'd add sonophones around the map similar to Jigsaw Boxes or Sadako's TVs. The songstress can interact with the sonophones to allow her to carry her tone throughout the map and inflict deafness on survivors near the other sonophones. This would allow her to sneak up on survivors if there isn't a clear line of sight. For the survivor, as she gets near a sonophone, her chase music plays quietly through the nearby sonophone with an old-timey audio filter to signify she may be getting close to using one.
When a sonophone is used, it must recharge over time before being used again, and if she uses another, sonophones that are charging will not carry her tone. Recharging sonophones have a rewind sound effect coming from them, so survivors know if it's safe or not. The songstress comes with three personal perks. The World is My Stage, Hex, Sing With Me, and New Amont. The World is My Stage. This stage isn't large enough for two, and you're not about to step down. You become obsessed with one survivor. When chasing the obsession, receive a speed boost to vaulting, pallet breaking, and missed basic attack cooldown speeds. When a survivor rescues the obsession from a hook, that survivor becomes the new obsession. Hex, Sing With Me. A hex that brings those with stage fright into the limelight. If a survivor hides within your terror radius for several seconds, they scream, revealing their location, and suffer from the exposed status effect for 30 seconds. The hex effects persist until its hex totem is cleansed. Denouement. Once the main act has concluded, you know how to end the show. After closing the hatch, the last survivor's aura is revealed for 5 seconds if they're at least a certain distance away from you. These perks aid the songstress in chase and allow her to weed out survivors. I think these perks are strong in the right situations, but not oppressive in a majority of them. I just would like to clarify that my heart is not set on the numbers, merely the conditions and the effects, because I will be honest and admit I don't have a strong grasp on things like how far a meter is. I'm using other perks as guidelines, but I'm more than open to the idea of tweaking the numbers. Now, I'll go over some potential add-ons to help demonstrate the potential playstyles of this killer. This list is not exhaustive, but just some ideas. Empty Water Glass. A glass devoid of water. Reduces warm-up time by X seconds. Simple Melody. A sheet of paper with a melody Amelie's mother used to hum to her. Reduces the distance in which the warm-up can be heard by X meters. Charred Ribs. A ribcage nearly reduced to ashes in the Belle Rose Opera House. Increases the maximum duration of the tone by X seconds. Fresh Record. A record with Amelie's last song. Reduces recharge time of the sonophones by X seconds. Bell Rose Staff Photo. A photo containing all the Bell Rose staff, including the man that stole her limelight. After hooking the obsession, gain the undetectable status effect for 60 seconds. Narcissistic Portrait. A portrait of Amelie in all her glory. After hooking a survivor, grants the undetectable status effect for 30 seconds. Delusions of Grandeur. A note that Amelie wrote to her mother about her aspirations. If you do not warm up for 30 seconds, increases the range of your next tone by 100%. Finally, as far as the songstress goes, this chapter would come with a new map based on the Belle Rose Opera House. It would be an indoor map with a central theater room, but other peripheral rooms and spaces such as the front of house and behind the stage, as well as possibly a catwalk above. I'd envision it to be fairly open with large rooms, kind of like the upper level of the game. I won't detail it too much since I think that goes a little bit beyond what I can do in a video, but just know that there would be a premise there, even if it were another indoor map. Please don't be mad. Nisha O'Connor had lived a rough life, no doubt, but one he did not lament. Though he lived in the slums and had to resort to less than honorable means to make a living, he enjoyed himself. The rush from being chased down by whoever was a high that Nisha could not resist. One dark and rainy night, on the run from a drunken group of rough-looking men he had conned, he found himself stuck in a back alley. As the men cornered him, a dark mist spat itself out and enveloped him in its grip. When it cleared, the men were shocked to find that Nisha had vanished. Whether he made it out with a magic trick or was truly gone, no one would miss the no-good thief. Nisha is a survivor predicated on escaping troublesome situations. His personal perks, Runaway, Escape Route, and Into the Fire power him up as the killer approaches while allowing him a smoother escape. Runaway. You're used to making a break for it, so how is running for your life any different? When in chase, delay the onset of each stage of the killer's bloodlust by a few seconds. Escape Route. Getting away is all about having a way accessible to you, and only you. While in chase, you may vault a window one additional time before it is blocked by the entity reduces the time that these vaulting locations are blocked by the entity by a few seconds. Into the fire. When the coast is clear, you feel at ease, but when it's not, you know how to move quickly. Receive an 8% bonus to repair speed. For every few meters between your location and the killer, decrease the repair bonus by 1%. When you are the obsession, decrease the repair bonus by 0.8% instead. Increases the odds of becoming the killer's initial obsession by 100%. I know that's kind of a complicated uh, description, but 
basically the closer you are to the killer the faster you can repair generators and if you're the obsession uh, you get a wider range of how far you can be while still receiving a bonus so just to sort of clarify <laughs> I'll be honest, these perks seem pretty strong in the right hands, but I don't think are overly strong in general. I do think they're decent checks to the bloodlust and vault block mechanics, which I find to be a band-aid to bad map design and can end up being unbalanced as they currently stand. Moreover, since most second chance perks in 6.1.0 got nerfed pretty hard, I think giving a little bit of breathing room with bloodlust is good. Again, the numbers aren't hard and fast, especially with the range of Into the Fire, but I think the concepts have potential. And there you have it! My idea for a Dead by Daylight chapter. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching.